Mr. Levitt, uh, pharmacy benefit managers are key players, or should be, in alleviating patients' financial burden at the pharmacy counter as they frequently set patient out-of-pocket costs based on a drug list price. The higher the list price, the more the patient pays, an obvious burden. Less obvious but equally concerning is that PBMs benefit significantly from high list prices and have no incentive to choose lower price drugs to drive down patient costs. PBMs extract rebates from manufacturers based on list price in exchange for a manufacturer's drug receiving formulary placement. Those rebates are passed on to plans and employers, but almost never to patients. And manufacturers also pay distributors, group purchasing organizations, and specialty pharmacies percentage fees that are based on the list price. The patient gets nothing. So under the current structure, PBMs make more money when a drug's list price increases while patients bear the financial burden. Conversely, if a manufacturer lowers the list price, PBMs stand to lose money while patients benefit. So, Mr. Levitt, do you agree that it would be better for patients if the supply chain was delinked from list prices so that patient out-of-pocket costs were based on net prices? Yeah, there's absolutely no doubt that patients would, would do better paying a copay based on that lower price, based on uh, the, the drug benefit structure of, of almost all plans. And let me ask you, would, would patients be better off if PBMs and other supply chain entities were paid flat fees for the services they provide? A absolutely, they would, now, as long as it was a reasonable flat fee. Now, Umera uh, treats people who are afflicted with crippling rheumatoid arthritis. This critical medicine can cost patients more than $80,000 a year. It should be good news to consumers that Umera biosimilars are being launched, which should make the treatment more affordable for patients who desperately need it. But because the economic incentives to PBMs are completely skewed, the biosimilar drug launched with two different prices, one with a high list price and large rebate, one with a low list price and lower rebate. So, Take another look at this chart. We know PBMs favor the high list price in order to obtain larger rebates, even though the patient would pay significantly less if PBM selected the drug with the lower list price. So is it true, Mr. Levitt, that the current structure incentivizes P PBMs to select higher cost drugs to the detriment of patients? Yes, Senator, it does, and, and it's often to the detriment of, of the patient because sometimes there's a better drug on formulary that, uh, that is, doesn't pay as much of a rebate that would be better for the patient. You know, the Pharmacy Care Management Association, which represents the PBMs, includes research on their website that states, and I quote, high list prices hurt patients who must pay these prices. If list prices were lower, out-of-pocket payments based on list prices would be lower and more affordable. It, it rocked my mind when I read this. So if the PBM themselves acknowledge lower list prices would help patients at the pharmacy counter, why would they still place preference on a higher list price product when a drug company has given them a better option for their patients? Because they have established uh, this architecture in the system where they have these rebate aggregators that we believe are secretly siphoning a lot of that, that rebate out and not giving it back to the plan or the consumer. Thank you. Now, finally, as a result of mergers and acquisitions in recent years, CVS Caremark, Express Scripts, uh, Optum RX uh, now control approximately 80%, 80% of all U.S. prescription drug claims. This level of concentration gives these PBMs market power over data, drug coverage, and contracting. 80%. The hyper-consolidation with little to no regulatory oversight creates inappropriate negotiating leverage that discourages competition and makes it difficult to achieve transparency, affordability, and timely access for patients. So, Mr. Levitt, how does the consolidation in the PBM market impact costs for patients, and what sort of regulation and oversight is needed to protect consumers? I, th I think, first of all, the, the, um, there's massive power influence over physicians, uh, which is a problem. We want physicians to, to act independently. Um, I think what th some of the things Congress could do uh, to lower drug price would be to create uh, more transparency, as has been discussed a lot, 
but also a, a safe harbor for rebates. If PB, PBMs want to earn a rebate um, and keep money, it should be a, an amount defined by the government. I think that would help lower drug prices. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I, I appreciate Mr. Levitz from New Jersey, his sock wear. Um, I would say if, if we were starting over, I would blow up this whole model, uh, the supply chain, because I think it is an antiquated model. And I believe the free market works when there's competition, but you've got so much vertical in integration, so much consolidation of market power, and, 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 and no transparency has been pointed out a lot of times already. And um, I just, th this to me makes no sense. And, and I've tried to study this, uh, this supply chain and how this uh, drug pricing works in this country. Um, and I just, it, it is incredibly complex. There isn't any other thing, product that we buy um, in the market that has such a complicated and antiquated um, way of, of getting products to the consumer. Um, I, I wanna, I say that as just an observation and something that I hope we can work on, but I know that these, uh, some of these issues are embedded in, in a system that's been in place for a long time, but I, I would start over.